My own ambition is to get people to understand that tires equal safety. What it is to share the road that mm. we should have empathy for one another shaped me as the way I am today because I also want to work with stories. But actually, there's something that comes before the accident, which is the only thing that ties the car to the ground. Mm. And that's the tires. With so many different platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and their purposes evolving daily, navigating social media can be, well, complicated. Welcome to the Social Media Sucks Podcast from Cupco. Social media. Social media. Social media. Social media. Really sucks. Where we unpack the latest trends and help remove the suck from social media. <laughs> then I don't feel as much pressure. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, last time I kind of put you under the gun yeah. here. Yeah. Welcome okay. back to the Social Media Sucks Podcast by Cupco. If you ever experienced the fear of missing out when it comes to social media and marketing trends, then this is definitely the right place for you. We help you level up your business and marketing skills by covering the latest news within social media and through our inspiring guests. So before we get started, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel or our podcast, please do so now because it would really help us get all this amazing inspiration and education out there to more business people and marketers just like yourself. So let's get into today's episode. With me today, I have Kasper Svenemose from uh, Continental Deck, Continental Tires, uh, and of course, our CEO, Chris Carbonis. Hey guys, what's up? By the end of this episode, you will learn how a brand in the automotive industry does marketing. You will get some insights into the strategy and the purpose and main KPIs for campaigns. Wow, That's it. I love it. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm, su I'm super excited. No, honestly, super like, this, is, this has been one that we've been waiting for. I wanted to be get, get the podcast big enough so that we could say, Casper, come on the podcast. And you've already been influenced with the hat. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I like the hat. Thank you for the gift. I love this. Yeah, this he awesome. bribed us to come on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> True. Yeah. Exactly. Here, as I'll long bring as hats. I can get water and I can bribe you guys. Yeah, then it's so good. It's perfect. So, so before so we start it, we want to do an uh, introduction to you for our listeners. Casper, can you tell us a little bit about your career and how you got to the position as marketing manager for Continental Tires today? Yeah. So I'm Casper, as you mentioned. I am... 33 years old. I have two kids. I used to work at a uh, football club in Denmark called Bonby. So I have rival to the guest you had yesterday or the yes. other time, FC Copenhagen. It was a really, really fun time. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up 500 meters from the stadium. So obviously I have been a fan for my whole life and mm -hmm. it has been a dream to either play for the club or work for the club. Obviously, play for the club was <laughs> the didn't first work dream. Oh, <laughs> didn't really work. I, I wasn't really that good. No, no. I mean, it was... Or they, you, you were just too good here. for that team. That's the... No. <laughs> no, not really. No, not so I, I really okay. sucked, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, it was it was fine, but it was not for a professional career. It was a hobby. Sure. hobby. It, was, uh, it was for fun. Yeah, mm. good. So I started working and I figured out I, I liked marketing. Um, and I thought that maybe I can do something here that can actually change them for the club. So I uh, approached the um, the store manager while I was in, uh, what's that called? First degree yeah, in okay. English? Yeah. yeah. What is that? Uh, first, yeah. Freshman, first, freshman okay. year. Freshman I year, I guess, in, in high school. In high school, okay. Uh, I was uh, with then. a bunch of guys from my class and we said, well, can we come and work here? And he said, yeah, sure, it's okay. all good. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff to do, so you can just pack orders and then send them. Okay. And that's when I started and then it just developed and after a few years i got an internship while i was working at the uh, at the club and i had the uh, university going on so yeah. i was really happy for, uh, about that mm. and then i got a contract after that then i just worked my way up and then i ended up working at a, as a project coordinator and i had a lot of hats on to be honest because it's a very small organization yeah. so <laughs> you have to be able to do a lot of stuff and I think it shaped oh. me in many ways. It's a metaphor you guys are carrying. Yeah, okay, now yeah. I get it. Why the hats? hats? Okay, fine. We wear many hats. <laughs> exactly. As marketing leaders. So I think it actually shaped me quite a lot because it showed me that if you fight for it for yourself and that you are willing to be curious and mm. stay curious throughout your whole career, then you can really gain a lot of insights and a lot of, I don't know, um, stuff that can help you grow, but also help the company grow. Yeah. So as we just discussed before we hit record, 
we had to work out how to create a uh, YouTube channel, how to create an Instagram channel and how to create the content by ourselves because we had no money to go out and uh, invest with uh, agencies. Mm. So we had to do it all th- uh, by ourselves. So it was going into YouTube, figuring out, okay, how do you edit? How do you shoot? How do you get the correct white balance? How do you do this and that? Mm. Yeah. And that really shaped my way of thinking in towards who I am today. Mm. that I am this, you know, everything can be possible as long as you're willing to work for it. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's a good attitude. And I think a lot of marketers are in that same position, right? Um, Specifically also on social media, it's been sort of, it's becoming the main channel now, but it it has been traditionally more like scrappy and sort of try to do it, you know, as cheap as possible. And, you know, how do we just you know get our get on with it and just make some stuff and and it hasn't really gotten the focus it's getting it more now but but it has been that way and i love that you're saying like stay curious because i think that's what marketing is about nowadays because it's moving so fast and yeah. it's changing so fast that if you don't stay curious then you're going to miss out on for the, sure the latest and greatest and, mm. and but i also think the it. authenticity that i gained at working at a club because everything at a club is story driven okay so obviously you have the points at at each week so you play sunday 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 so so each week is a campaign week mm. yeah sort of so you have to for, focus on a storyline on each week yeah which also implies that you should really work fast because you have i don't know 40 plays or 40 games per year or something yeah. like that so There's you need to be campaign. very creative yeah. into in towards the campaign strategies um but the authenticity in towards working with storylines sort of shaped me as the way I am today because I also want to work with stories today. Because I just, if I'm being totally honest, I work at Continental Tires. And if I ask any of you guys in this room, you probably don't know which tires you have on your car. You might because you are driving a big truck. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But you also come from, you come from another country. So yeah. I think culture-wise, it's another thing over there. Whereas if you drive a Volkswagen up or whatever fits the city. You don't know. You don't know, you don't care. And that's yeah. 99% of the target group that we have. They yeah. don't care about it. So we have a very low interest product. Yeah. So we need to, to be honest about ourselves. I can't go out on social media saying, well, our tire is this much better than the competi- competition. Uh, it breaks this much better, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. No one cares yeah. because it's like an airbag. You never see it works. Yeah, that's a good point. It is like an airbag. It's, exactly. It's a safety feature. It needs to be there. Exactly. But yeah. you're not thinking that much about it. So we need to communicate that safety starts with the tire. And that's sort of something that we do when we have a very tactical period. So normally when we have a winter tire season. Yeah. But in the summer period where we have, for example, our big uh, sponsorship, the Tour de France, we work on brand awareness. Yeah. Because if you go to your tire dealership and your tire guy says to you, so what kind of tire do you want? And he says, you can get Continental, you can get Michelin, you can get BF Goodrich or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you have any chance of remembering something that we did, which was grid. You might say Continental. You might say Continental. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing where it is, it gets a bit tricky to work with tires because it mm-hmm. is so low interest. Yeah. Whereas if you work with uh, yeah. Apple, for example, mm. it is the High opposite, demand. right? Yeah. Yeah. But how is the landscape in general, like with the competitors as well? Is it only, do you think it's only an issue you guys experience or is it across the whole industry? I think in the tire industry, it's it's the same. Yeah. One competitor who might have a, a better bounce off could be Michelin mm-hmm. because of the Michelin guide. Mm. Yeah. Everyone knows about the Michelin guide. You want to go to a Michelin star restaurant yeah. and stuff. But I'm actually thinking but I think about it's only marketers that know that it's tied to Michelin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. Because yeah. if you so if you go to a target group saying, I don't know, twenty five to forty years old. Yeah. I think it's very rare that people tie Michelin to tires. Yeah. Mm. They didn't know that it started out as road food guide. Exactly. Like where to eat when you're driving yeah. on mm. the road. That was the whole but beginning I mean, of from it, a right? marketer's point of view, I'm obviously very envious about it because yeah. they have it's so genius. much bro- brand yeah. awareness. Yeah. And they don't have to do anything anymore. Yeah, mm. that's true. Really. Yeah. They've really conquered that part. Yeah. But I think like I, I do think that you guys maybe more so than the other competitors have done a good job of sort of figuring out what is those like you said, your stories and how do you 
be a part of somebody's life beyond yeah. sort of the tires thing. And I think you guys have, obviously being in Denmark, you also have a unique position to talk about bicycle tires as well. And you also have a unique position to talk about more because of the bike thing sort of in Denmark, you have a unique way of, of sort of, which is the share the road campaign, which is going in and talking about community and sort yeah. of like, we all have to share the road together, bicyclists and car and you guys do both. And I think that's been really interesting to follow. And, and that's an, that's a nice entrance. Yeah. Uh, just to give some context, we make tires for cars, but yeah. we also make tires for bicycles yeah. and mm. then we make tires for a lot of other vehicles, but okay. just in the context of this conversation, we make tires for both. So, Back in the day, before I started working at Continental, we had a, a huge sponsorship in football. So we had the World Cup, the European Cup, the Champions League, uh, Europe League, wow. local sponsorships in Denmark, and then we had local sponsorships throughout the rest of the world. Mm. That sort of stopped because uh, f the football commercial side had really um, developed into being a very, very, um, how do you say that? It was extremely uh, it was a high amount of money you had to pay in mm -hmm. order to get the sponsorships yeah and you had a lot of competitors coming in so they were driving the price up mm. so continental said well we've done our job here we've been here for 10 years people link us to it so it's all good we need to find something else to both grow with but also to be alone with Mm. So we had a few years where we didn't really had the big main sponsorship, but then four years ago we signed with the tour mm. and we have just extended the contract to 27, 2017. And obviously as a keen fan myself and also a keen cyclist, that is uh, great for me. And also in this year, the road campaigns, mm. because it actually started off as how do we activate a global sponsorship locally? Yeah. Because the easiest thing would be to say, okay, now we have this global sponsorship and we have a lot of TV coverage throughout the, th the three weeks mm. in Denmark because in general, the tour is being watched quite a lot in Denmark. Mm. Yeah. And we have huge TV coverage because we have so much branding throughout the whole uh, race and each stage and also on the stage winner. And then obviously when you have the news and the stuff, you see the logo everywhere. Mm. So the yeah. easy thing would be just to lean back and say, great, all good we have the exposure yeah but we didn't want to do that we wanted to create something that had an impact something that was purpose-driven where we could say okay how can we change something within cycling slash car industry or yeah. not industry but the world yeah and we thought with the agency that we were working with okay we know there's an issue out there especially from racing um cyclist that is going on you know in the north here and, and everywhere and everywhere else really that there was sort of a fight going on between cyclists and car drivers a little bit um and at some point it escalates quite a lot yeah um and it is sometimes very dangerous to be out there mm. yeah so we thought how can we create something where we don't actually talk about tires but we get something out with a purpose and we try to do an impact. Mm. Yeah. And we thought, okay, let's try to create a campaign where we sort of get people to understand what it is to share the road, that mm. we should have empathy for one another, that you, Chris, as a, I don't know, let's say you are an enthusiast truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Those of you who know me. Yeah, <laughs> drives a truck. <laughs> Good guess, I guess. <laughs> but your truck is quite big. Yeah. So obviously, if you see one going on in your racing bike yeah. and you are, as many people in Denmark are, you will get very frustrated because oh, I can't overtake. I have to wait. I have to be, you know, this and that. Except for and not. This, I'm a nice driver. Okay, guys. I am, it was for the example. I am sharing the road, but it's a good example. I like yeah. it. It does happen a lot. So we were thinking, okay, how can, how can we create the empathy yeah. about that? So we started off quite small actually, uh, just to test it out. So we created these small videos where we just showed how can you overtake safely. Yeah. And then we didn't really say anything. They were about 20 seconds long. Mm. And then the end frame was just share the road. Mm. And social media just Ate it up. exploded. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Oh, they did like it. That was perfect for them. Well, 
Some liked it and some didn't. Okay. Obviously, because you have there's two There's a debate, ends. right? Yeah. There's it was like, a huge debate. Yeah, but there must but be an intermediate because there's a, there must be people who bike who has cars. I but mean, the, yeah, they should obviously. know, tap yeah. into both of the emotions. But that's, that's a good thing about the cycling sponsorship because most who are riding their bikes, yeah. either on a enthusiastic level as I do or something, someone who's just going in, uh, in the city center, yeah. Most of them has a either a driver's license or have mm. tried to drive cars. Yeah, yeah. So you have both there. Exactly. But then you have the other end where you have, I don't know, car drivers who aren't really interested in that. Yeah. And just see these uh, Lycra guys slash girls and they <laughs> just explode within their mindset saying, OK, fuck these guys. I, I need to get something out yeah. here. OK, that's interesting. Mm. So we just saw an explosion in the commentating fields and yeah. and you had both ends. And they were just saying, oh, but saying, bicycles should do this or cars should do this. Exactly. Or, and then yeah. someone were backing up and someone came in. And from a marketer's point of view, we said, OK, this is great. Yeah. But I mean, from a empathetic point of view, we saw some really crazy comments mm. that we needed to t either tap into or actually just delete because they were just too nasty. Yeah. And we said, OK, we have something here. Mm. Yeah. Now we can grow you this. Found a trigger point. So yeah. we test it, and you know, when something works, you can just scale it up. Yeah. Mm. So the next year, we we did something else where we we found six car drivers and six uh, bicyclists, both on an enthusiastic level, and also someone who was just riding their bikes within the city center, just to have both perspectives. Yeah. And then we invited them in to a, a closed session with a conflict mediator. Mm one-on-one, -on -one, they started off saying, well, I hate you because of that. And the other one said back from his perspective. And then we took them into uh, three sort of um, fake rooms mm. where one one of them were to just create understanding of what is your frustrations towards me. The other one was about, okay, now we put a car driver on a bike and vice versa, mm. just to say, okay, can you understand as a car driver, when you're sitting here on your bike, that it can keep, it can be very frustrating while sitting on your bike and almost being hit mm. on the elbow with a uh, side mirror or being pissed at with the uh, sprinklers. Yeah. Because that's also very common. So and then put on the, the third sprinklers one, as you go past. Exactly. Really? The third like one was just to get them to, to write a sentence together mm. saying, okay, what is our point of view or how we can solve this issue? Mm. And then we had six and we created this manifest, which was the main point of what we were going through with. And that video just exploded. Mm -hmm. I mean, we created it, I think it was two minutes and 45 seconds, something yeah. like that. So quite long. Yeah, I remember we, the video. We had 600,000 through plays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. And we actually didn't spend that much money to yeah. push it. We ended up in the morning shows, the evening yeah. shows, we were in podcasts, we were, I mean, we were everywhere. But it makes sense. I mean, like it's, I got to give you guys kudos for the, for the work that you've done there because I think a lot of brands when they're doing purposeful campaigns, they just pick what's the latest hot sort of issues. Equality in society, diversity in society, uh, yeah. environment, like, and of course these are big issues and of course you can run campaigns about them, but what separates you from those companies is that you guys have found a purpose that ties with what you do. Yeah. Like it, it's so close to your product. It's so close to your guys' mission and your values that it just feels good. And that's why it sort of works. Whereas I think like slapping on the latest trendy issue, it's like, well, does like, do you really have like, is that really what your product is? like McDonald's going after, you know, equality in the world. It's like, well, is that your product? Like yeah. your product mm. is, is maybe there, but not really. Yeah. So I think like that is for, for me really where, you know, those of you listening, finding a purposeful positive impact campaign, a thing that you can really hang your hat on is the thing that follows your brand thing that's really close to your product. And yeah. you guys have done that yeah. extremely successfully. Yeah. And also being very well aware of, what your issues in an issue is and what you want. Mm. Yeah. We it wanted to create authentic. something that is impactful within the sponsorship that we had and that we can tie our products to. Mm. And as you say, that makes it very authentic because we have products for both ends. Yeah. yeah. It so, fits so well. Yeah and, yeah. and 
the most important thing for us is not to be biased. We we shouldn't be the one saying that the, the car drivers are the worst or the bike riders are the worst. Mm. We should just be in between and then create some debate forum to figure out, okay, how can we change the industry? Mm. We have been doing it now for, yeah, since 2018, roughly. And now we see these um, law suggestions saying that we should have 1.5 meters when car drivers should overtake uh, bike riders. Mm. And it's just fun to see how things are developing. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can sort of say, okay, you know, as of 1st April, not 1st, 2nd April, you know that then though that is the date where the story starts to happen mm. so it started again this year with some guy who were in a very nasty crash in Yulan, i think mm. um i think he almost uh broke his leg or something like that because of a car driver was just frustrated with him riding his bike and okay. then he just i mean it wasn't really set in stone that he did it on purpose mm. but it looked like it Mm. And those stories just come out wow. every April. That's then crazy. They, and then that's the start off with the campaign, really. Yeah. Because that's when we see people are going out on their bikes and that's where we see the frustrations is going. Mm. And what we thought about this year is that, okay, we have the tour starting in Denmark. We will have a lot of coverage. We will have a lot of talk about the tour. We, we will probably see a rise in spectators both on site but also on the viewer's side mm. so we need to be impactful not only on site but also in the campaign so we we needed to create something that was stepping on the other campaign that we did in 2019 yeah makes sense mm. yeah i mean the tour stuff has been really good to see i think that like you guys also have been well it's not luck but it's like it's sort of worked out perfectly also that it came <laughs> yeah. to denmark it's it's sort of you know you also have a very good uh, relationship with Skoda, and Skoda was also a main sponsor as well, and yeah. then also a Dane won it. Mm. <laughs> so it's like a lot of good things sort of came together for you guys also in the Tour de France stuff. Mm. So yeah, and, and really we nice. were, we started working on it two years ago. Yeah, to be honest, but yeah. when we heard about it the first time, we said okay, we need to do something that is impactful here. Yeah, we need to elaborate on yeah. the share the road campaign. We need to be someone who has been heard and seen before the tour mm. yeah because we knew once the tour is going we had a lot of coverage yeah and a lot and, of competition and, as well and from a lot other of competitions brands. because yeah. everyone wanted a bite yeah. of the cake yeah. everyone so i said or we said we need to stretch out the sponsorship before it starts absolutely because otherwise it's just three weeks yeah. and then people like well, that's that. See mm. you next year. Yeah. I think that's also a good tip for you, for listeners out there. It's like if there isn't a special event that's tied to your purpose campaigns, tied to your campaigns, like it isn't really just about during those months or during that period. It is really about extending that out yeah. and trying to be because you are during that time, you're going to be met with everybody else that's also planned something in that time. So, you know, you can really shine above the rest if you figure out how do we go outside the lines and how do we sort of make sure that we're yeah, it's like like this really because you guys you create a podcast you use it for podcasts you use it for youtube you use it for clips on instagram you use yeah. it for tiktok we you just stretch out, out the content yeah. and it's the same here with the sponsorship you want to stretch it out yeah so obviously so for example taking formula one who has this drive to survive on netflix yeah i think it's a brilliant show mm. When you look in the numbers, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's epic. It's, yeah. I mean, I haven't watched Formula One since I was, I don't know, ten years old, something like since Schumacher. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. to be honest, I don't really watch it anymore, and it it hasn't really driven my driven my interest mm -hmm. into watch it since I watched the show. Mm -hmm. But I know who rides now, or drives now. I know about the stories behind it. Mm. I also know about the numbers because I have been very curious about what yeah. has this impact done for the formula one and looking at the numbers is just absolutely crazy yeah 800 mm. million watchers worldwide freaking crazy it's crazy yeah mm. and as yeah. a guy who works in a in an industry where we have tires Automotive, i yeah. see pirali yeah. everywhere mm. yeah, yeah. i i know that pirali They're is like for all this is great guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly they're yeah. super stoked about it the yeah. good thing is that now the Netflix has seen this is really working. Mm. They are doing something with the tour, which launches next yeah. year. And mm. they started filming in Copenhagen. Yeah. So obviously, okay. I'm thinking again. 
where it's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I will get even more exposure now. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I know for next year, once that launches, I need to have something ready that is before that launches to yeah. keep the story going and, yeah. and keep the authenticity. Mm, definitely. That's great. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, how, what's your core focus in when you come, when we talk about your marketing strategies? Because obviously you have the B2B, but uh, sorry, you have the B2C, but you also have the B2B marketing. Yeah. Is there any synergies uh, you want to create? I mean, on the B2C side, it's more about creating awareness of the brand and creating an understanding that attire equals safety. Mm. So actually going back to the um, airbag, if I ask you if I was a car, uh, car dealer, so do you want the cheap airbag or do you want the uh, expensive, uh, most safe airbag? Mm. You would say the most safe airbag, right? Yeah, hopefully. Because <laughs> you, you know that an airbag equals safety. Mm. But actually there's something that comes before the accident, which is the only thing that ties the car to the ground. Mm. And that's the tires. But that's a really difficult story to tell because people just look at tires and they see this round thing with a hole in and yeah. you can't really differentiate them. Mm. Yeah. What is a good tire? What is a bad tire? No one cares yeah. unless you are a nerd and unless you are working with a tire company. Yeah, and they don't know about the safety features. Like they don't no. understand like, okay, what is the price difference going to get me? It's mm. a piece of rubber. Like yeah. exactly. How is this going to make it, it me It takes more about four years to create a, yeah. uh, a tire product. Okay. And you have, I don't know, 20 30 people working on it for four years and okay. they spend so much money and they test it and they test yeah. it and they test it mm. we have this test center in Hanover, which is huge i think it's yeah. equivalent to i don't know 20 football fields or something like that mm. yeah. it's freaking huge it's a lot like shoes in some ways like sports shoes yeah like i was i just <laughs> this came to my mind about buying shoes and that is the closest thing that you have to the the ground and if you're buying sports specific sports shoes mm. like they're for different things and and the ingenuity and the innovation that goes into the sole like the rubber yeah. and how it actually impacts the ground and how it impacts the rest of the your body is a big innovation and, and a lot of people spend time on it right and but spend money on it the big difference there is that what you have on your shoes is something that you feel for yourself. Yeah. Mm. You can feel that if you have a slippery shoe, okay, I will not wear that when it rains. Mm. Yeah, for you can't example. feel that with the car. Or if you are going on trail, yeah. you're going on normal sneakers, you can't do that. You can feel that mm. yeah. because it's impactful on your body. But when you are in your car, you can't really feel it. Mm -mm. I have so, no idea. I mean, if you have uh, tires that are worn out, you just press the brake a bit more and then you don't really feel it. If you have tires that hasn't, that hasn't been inflated to the right amount, you just press the gas a bit more. Yeah. But actually, if you do the same on a bike, for example, if you're riding a bike, which is half you full, really feel mm. you can really feel that you need to create a lot of more power yeah. in order to go forward. Mm. Yeah. So it's point. all about safety. Yeah. 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 So, so we it. have one point about communicating the safety about tires, which mm. is in the winter period. And then we have the other point where we try to create awareness of the brand, mm. which is in the summer period. And that's where we try to be impactful in the authenticity and being something that is purpose driven. Of course. But on because the B2B side, you spend more time like, do you have to do education on the B2B market? Like yeah, sure. why your tires? Yeah. So that they push your guys' tires ahead of. I mean, we, we have a lot of different approaches on the B2B, but obviously on B2B, it's a bit more nerdy. Mm. You, you, mm. We have this uh, thing called Continental Academy okay. where we invite our key dealers to a two-year sort of school program. It's six modules where we invite them to Contidrome, which is our test center. We invite them to a session where we talk about safety features within the tire. Did you say it was two years? Two years, yeah. Two years, so yeah. every few months they come? or It's only actually six modules. Okay. But it's into Spread two out. years because then you sort of have a voice so mm. the dealer for yeah. two years mm. okay so we could do it in one year yeah but it's just to spread it out and it's be able to mindful of create, their time and yeah, yeah sure and it's also to create a relationship with the dealers yeah. mm. that makes sense and i mean in in the b2b side when we do marketing there it's way more on product yeah so yeah. now we have this product you can do this and that yada 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 mm. we can show the spider web which shows how much better in breaking it this mm. in towards the predecessor yeah stuff like that we don't do that on the b2c side mm. because no one cares but do you see any uh like uh 
good return when you have when you really succeed in the B two C side or with your campaigns? Do you that, see it? Does it's, it impact? It's so difficult. Okay. To measure. Mm. Yeah. Because we have this product which is super low interest, and you 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 buy tires when you when your tires are worn out. Or when you buy a new car and you want a set of winter tires, mm. that's how it is in Denmark, and everything is driven in dealers and through our dealers. We don't sell anything by ourselves, so we mm. can't really tie our campaigns no. into what sale. And for example, last year you remember the winter at the end of December, it started snowing heavily. Once so it started impacts. snowing, we sell tons of tires, mm. yeah. and the ones who have the tires on the warehouse, they will win that. Mm. So it's so difficult because it's so low, low interest. Yeah. So it's all about creating the awareness, both as within the consumers, mm. but also with the dealers. Because if the dealers have a good relationship with us, obviously they will choose us because then they can push that out to the end consumers. It's very rare that an end consumer comes into a dealership saying, "So I want Continental tires on my car," and if they do, they are probably above fifty-five years old. Okay, because they've had a brand affinity for it. They've got some something like that. I mean, I could, for example, my father. Mm. He, before I started working at the tire company, he just bought whatever was on the car when he bought it. Yeah. So if it had good year on when he bought so the car, he then he the would car. just go to the dealer mm. and say, "I need the same uh, mm. tires on the car." Yeah. Okay. And I mean, for myself, before I started within a tire company, I just came to a dealership saying, "Okay, I want this car, fine, and I also want a winter set of tires." Yeah. No one asked me what brand they, I wanted, and I didn't really care because I just needed a winter tire mm. set. Yeah, it's it's different in Denmark. I mean, like we can talk about the differences in markets. The U.S. is way different, and Canada is way oh. different. Yeah, where I'm from, like there is a <clears throat> specific like I want this tire, and I want you know I want Firestone or I want Goodyear. Or I want, for example, B.F. Uh, Goodrich. Uh, They've been really good at branding themselves and positioning themselves with the white markings on the tires. Okay. And also being on site within movies and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So I think they have a, I don't know, natural interest when you have truck tires, for example. Yeah. Yeah. They are like that. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah. But nowadays I would buy Continental, obviously. <laughs> of course. You have to switch. Obviously. Yeah. I've got I've got something else on right now. I better get it off. <laughs> I think you actually have BF Goodrich. Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 You do a look. Is that is that now that you're on the tire side? Do you like <laughs> notice people's tires? Yeah. And do you judge people based on their tires? Like, oh. I do. Yeah. <laughs> You're like that but person. when you don't sell when you don't sell directly to customers, you always have dealers or in the middleman. How do you establish your KPIs then for your campaigns? Yeah, that's the that thing. We sort of have to create our own KPIs. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we have these KPIs. Obviously, when we create yeah. campaigns like Share the Road, mm. we want to see a high view through rate. Yeah. We yeah. want to see a high completion rate and we want to see a high engagement rate. And all of these three numbers are really good within the majority of our campaigns with Share the Road. I mean, we saw up to 25% in engagement rate in some of our posts this year. Mm. Okay. We had a very good view through rate as well. Um, some were forced because you have YouTube, yeah, you can force it. You can also do it on uh, TV2 and uh, yeah. stuff like that. But also the ones which was non skippable uh, was was skippable they were also having a good view through rate okay. mm. and those are good numbers for us because we want to create the story and obviously when you have a story you want people to see the story to the end mm. but what we did um, last year was to sort of create our own KPI in something that was impactful because what i was thinking is okay when i am coming to our headquarters and they say okay what did you do this year well, we had uh, this much impressions, which they can rely on because they know about the number. But as you've been talking about, and as I'm agreeing with you, is that impressions is just a shit number, to be honest. Yeah. Because you can just tie a knot and pour a bit more money into it, and then you'll get more impressions. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really create any value. So what we wanted to do is, what creates value for us? View through rate is great, and engagement rate is also good. But what is actually a something that really shows that people are on board with the campaign mm. so we created um the campaign page where people could sign up mm -hmm. they didn't really sign up to anything they couldn't win anything it was just about i want to be part of the movement movement share the road i want to be an ambassador okay so for the first year i think we got about a thousand subscribers on it 
And this year we ended up at 4,100. That's great. And obviously some of the campaign were tied into sign up and be part of it, but it wasn't the full campaign. Mm. Right. And it's just to show both for ourselves internally, but also when I'm going into the headquarters, say, okay, I have 4,100 people who are really, really 100% on board with the campaign. They even signed up for it and mm. they didn't really, they couldn't win anything. No. Mm -hmm. It's an extra layer of Exactly, sort of so that's engagement. a strong KPI for yeah, us. And that makes sense. The other part is that now we have 4,000 people within our first party data. Yeah. We can use that as a lookalike audience. We can grow that. We can yep. sort of create a B2C campaign newsletter where we can continue talking about mm. the products and uh, not the products, but about the campaigns and stuff. And that can be very impactful. Maybe because you can use it for the products, but I think you have to find a really interesting th angle into it. We yeah. haven't worked it out. Yeah. as of yet but yeah, the, the, idea, the basic idea is that we create something that is similar to the social media experience mm. yeah. but in a campaign newsletters format um, but once we hit for example when we know okay it will be snow Thursday we can use that to say now it's time yeah. to switch mm -hmm. guys it's a good point yeah yeah I love using that sort of external data or the external event to to gain awareness yeah. to, to seizing an opportunity attention. right yeah yeah and it's yeah. it's also about you know not putting all your hats it's just like a hat kind of thing today right <laughs> putting all this your hats hat into episode. to the social media companies yeah. yeah because you can't control them no so if you have your own you have community, to have your own your stuff exactly yeah. Yeah. I totally and, advocate for that and we yeah. need to grow that you know especially in these times because the cookie policies and and the data mm -hmm. is just getting more and more difficult for marketers to mm. target the right kind of people. 100%. Mm. So we need to start that and we are we're probably a bit too late, but you know, you're never really too late. You just have to do it. Mm. Do you see any opportunities and channels you haven't explored yet? Yeah, when, for when sure. When we talk about social media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, as a company, we, we are a big company. We are about 190,000 employees. Mm. We have been working, I think the company is 151 years old. So wow. obviously it's an old company and it's a big, you know, super tanker. That so when we are going in the right direction, a lot of parts need to move in order to move. Mm. But the good thing about being in the market is that you have a lot of freedom to act, which is actually a core identity within the company. So as a company, we mostly use Facebook and Instagram. Mm. Obviously you have TikTok, which is going on skyrocket. We also use YouTube, but as a company, from my point of view, we haven't used it as YouTube should be used. Mm. Mm. So I, I see a lot of potential there mm. if you wanted to go that way. Obviously, there's also a huge potential within TikTok reels and stuff. But as a company, we're not allowed to have our own TikTok profile because of data issues. Mm. Mm. So yeah. if we should work with TikTok, it should be probably with something that is an affiliate contract or something like that okay yeah or i mean you don't have to have a profile to run ads that's what you told me yeah yeah so that's also mm. a, a thing that's that's sort of a nice get out of jail mm. free card for yeah. a lot of brands exactly in your position that are like and i can't think have a profile yeah. yet. The, the interesting thing this year was that the huge campaign which cost a lot of money to create mm. had okay numbers but the smaller videos that we created where we just talked about share the road with influential people mm. worked in some cases better. Yeah. So if we can do the same and then create it to small formats such as Reels, such mm. as TikTok, Short form. I see a huge potential mm. in that in terms of creating yeah. Yeah, same or even better value mm. for the money. Yeah. yeah. You might as well do that because it's like you've made the content already. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Like most of the time we're advising clients like it should be native for the platform, but there's lots of workarounds on that. Like we're running ads for some clients that, you know, it wasn't made for TikTok, but we can sort of fix yeah. it to be. Right. Yeah. So it, it is working. Yeah. It's a good way to test content out as well. And especially when you are affiliate, I imagine it could also be a good case to present to the headquarters if you want to do anything. Right. And that's the thing. If yeah. you can present numbers and good cases for the headquarters, it's usually easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice to shine also as a yeah. field marketer out there, you know, yeah, doing yeah. something unique and innovative then.
Yeah. It does get attention. And we right? are in some cases seen as the freaks within yeah. the continental co- uh, uh, company because yeah. we do a lot of crazy stuff. And I mean, headquarters would never do a share the road campaign. Mm. No. Maybe now, I don't know. I Probably yeah. not. But they are Germans, right? So it's also tapping into a different culture that they won't Definitely. necessarily know. And also headquarters is trying to, it's actually like an agency within the company because they have to drive content from within and then try to spread that out to the markets. Mm. And that's so difficult because you have so many different markets. We have Denmark, which is sort of driven to winter and summer. And then you have Norway, which is really into winter. Then you have Finland, which is like almost only winter, right? Mm. Yeah. Then you have um, England, which is, I mean, rain, (laughs) (laughs) right? And then you have uh, the States, for example, which is all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. So it's so it's difficult yeah. to drive content from within as being yeah, such make it a big relevant company. for each market. Mm. Yeah. It's impossible. So that's totally a good thing whether we have the freedom to act yeah. to do something mm. locally. Yeah, you need to have that. I think that's a that's a key part. I mean, yeah. Yeah. headquarters can provide a little bit of of stuff and maybe the building blocks mm. for certain things, but there is a lot of market adaption and beyond adaption, market literally like creation. Yeah. That has to happen because you guys have a, a totally different market than mm. than Finland, for example. Exactly. I mean, it might as, be seen as, as you say, Scandinavia, but it's not. No, no. you can't really say that. No. You can mm. probably say that within Sweden, Norway, Finland, yeah. because that's similar Somewhat. in some cases. But, but I mean, South Sweden and Denmark is mm. more similar than yeah. North Sweden and mm. Norway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's very specific. Yeah, they're more tied together, but and it's geographic, right? Yeah. It's weather based. It's Mm. Yeah, it's culture based, right? So, yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to end on a future outlook note. Uh, where do you see? Uh, what's your What's your vision for uh, for Continental Tires? Denmark or global? everyone to buy tires every day. You can start with your own ambition. <laughs> New my own or, ambition. Yeah. How I do mean, you want to develop from your position? My own ambition is to get people to understand that tires equal safety. Mm-hmm. Not only about Continental tires or Michelin tires or whatever just to get people to understand that it is all about safety. Yeah. You need to be aware that the tires, if you have shit tires on, you might as well go and, I don't know, be part just of a have crash. no brakes. <laughs> just take your <laughs> brakes out. You don't need yeah. them if your tires are stuck. <laughs> people are not aware about it. No. But I think is in that some it? case they are, but I mean, I, yeah. I would... My ambition is to get people to know about that yeah. mm. and to, to go to that ambition. It's all about creating awareness of the brand, but also creating an awareness of the safety features. Yeah. So if I could do, if I have, if I had endless amounts of money, I would take the whole target group in Denmark, get them to the test center in Kontitome in Hanover, and then get them to, to try the different tests that we have down there mm. just to see how impactful it is to have a tire that is fresh mm. and a tire that is nearly worn out. Can't I you have do that tr- here? We can. But it's can we so take out a, like, can we just go to a racetrack <laughs> in Denmark? And we have something where you can sort of show it. Yeah. But also, it would be great to do it on the Considerum because it's yeah. so much better. But obviously you could do it here in Denmark and we want to do it, but we don't have the money to scale it so that a lot of people can do it, mm. no. but the, I think but an you idea. you can film it and then show people. Exactly. The idea I have in my head is to do something where you invite influential people to try this, but also yeah. normal end consumers, mm. yeah. just to show them what is the difference. So for example, if you take a tire that is completely fresh yeah. and then you go on a curve, and also having the right seasonal tire. So for example, yeah. in the winter, you go with winter tires and that's completely fresh. You go in a, t- in a curve where you have a lot of water. Then you have a worn out tire, also a winter tire, just to show you the difference yeah. in aqua planning. Or you example. should just take their tires off their own car and put it on the test car and be like, these are actually your own tires. Yeah. That yeah. could be good. And then they're like, holy shit. Yeah, we also had an <laughs> This idea is what about. I'm driving on every day? <laughs> <laughs> Please, God, no, I got to get new. And then give them new tires and be like, listen, we yeah. replaced your tires for you because, you know, we we care about your safety. And yeah. we had an idea about having similar, similar cars in front of a person. Yeah. And one car would say, this has the best airbag in the world mm. and worn out tires. Which one do you want? <laughs> do you want the other one? The other one had 
a fairly, fairly good airbag yeah. and really really good tires yeah um and also seat belt yeah uh, okay. which one would you choose the one with the seat belt <laughs> 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 That's an easy one. <laughs> Z-Belt's got to be the game, the game winner there. <laughs> that's yeah. the that's the the trump card. That's the that's the Uno reverse card. The Z -belt. I mean, so, so it's all about creating something that is fun to see on the B two C side, but also creates mm -hmm. value in yeah. terms of creating yeah. what is impactful, what is safety, yeah. yeah, and how does this actually affect your everyday life? Yeah. yeah. But I think you're on the right track. I think like showing people the need, like. Because people don't understand that. People don't understand. Like they need to see it to believe it. Yeah. Yeah. They need to feel it to exactly. believe yeah. it. You have and to feel it on their own body. Yeah. Yeah. They, they need to feel like what yeah. it's like. And I think you can, you can do that by showing others and getting close enough to their emotions on yeah. camera that people go, okay. We actually have this very yeah. fun experience within the Continental Academy where you have similar cars. So one car is inflated to the exact amount of uh, pressure that mm -hmm. the tire should have the other one is half inflated something like that <laughs> then you go in cones just to see how the car reacts yeah mm -hmm. obviously you can feel that it's a bit more wobbly and like a ship yeah but you, as again you can just press the brake a bit more you can just press the power a bit more but then you go out of the car and then you go into a cargo bike the cargo bike is filled with 100 kilos in uh, both of the bikes yeah. One bike is inflated to the right amount of pressure. The other one is half. And then you see how difficult it yeah. is to drive it forward, but yeah. also to navigate through the cones. Yeah. Mm. It's very difficult. They need to it's feel it. Difficult. And I think people would have enough empathy when they see that stuff that they go, oh, I know exactly how this feels. Yeah. To feel somebody go through these cones and to try to you yeah. know, press a bike with half inflated tires. But then you go into your car and... You sort of forget to fill yeah. up your tires. Yeah, yeah, so there's a motor true. in it. Yeah. yeah. But maybe yeah. it would think me think like, oh, maybe I should check my tire pressure and Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Thank you guys for sharing. So here you have it. I will now summarize the gold nuggets provided by Casper and Chris Carpenter. I didn't give any of this episode. I had <laughs> no <laughs> gold This was the Casper show, and I actually like that. That's a the nice Casper episode. Show. I like that. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the ping pong that uh, yeah. that makes it happen. I, yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah. You are an uh, invaluable asset to this podcast. We all know that. I yeah. don't know about that, but especially about um, the hat game today. I really yeah, think yeah, you brought it today. What I yeah. what I yeah. could bring to the table today, provided so, by you. What is brand purpose? It it is you both agreed on this. It is consistency and finding a story that's so authentic to your brand and not only just tapping into any occasion or cultural trend. True. That's yeah. Nice. And so how do you then define KPIs when you have both B2B and B2C marketing tracks? For Continental, there are two sides of communication. There for the B2B side, you aim for creating knowledge and understanding to build relationship with the dealers and focus on communicating the safety and the products itself. And for the B2C side, uh, you really focus on creating awareness to purpose-driven campaigns to make the users aware of the safety and the importance of having the right products, actually. And to measure the success of the purpose campaigns, for Continental, you created stories and wanted people to see these stories that's emotional. So look at the KPIs to show the value of the campaign. And if you really reach the impact and your audience, you can measure on engagement rate, completion rate, and all these are great. But when you have a good campaign, it could maybe translate to beyond the hard data, which is in your case with the subscription initiative. Mm. And to leverage opportunity within social, you see opportunity, Casper, you see opportunities in channels like YouTube and TikTok and to reach your audience for awareness and positive impact and drive your purpose. So the end goal for you would be to get people to understand the safety that is within your product. Sure. And uh, so here we have it. How our brand in the automotive, <clears throat> in the automotive industry does marketing a purpose-driven marketing. Thank you for listening. Tune in for the next one. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. This has been the Social Media Sucks Podcast.